So the title of my talk today is going to be uh, characterizing the biosynthesis of lysostatin and tryptomyces persistence. So,
expression. So like I said before, we have identified a period of gene cluster. So we're going to prove that this cluster has to grow into the this compound. So we take, uh, this is a schematic showing the, um, the gene cluster. So we cloned it out and we put it, we clone it, in, we PCR it out and then we cloned it into a, pet, a piece at 152 vector through Gibson. And then we put it into a heterologous host. So in this case, it's another strain of Streptomyces, uh, Streptomyces albus albus and Streptomyces lividon. And then we would grow those cultures up and then we would do liquid extraction. And then we analyze it with HPLC-MS, which is high performance liquid chromatography, mass spectrometry. So basically what that means is HPLC, you inject a sample and HPLC will separate these, uh, separate analytically on uh, the compounds based on some chemical property, in this case, the hydrophobicity, and then the MS would measure the mass of each of those compounds. So we can see here that the wild type Streptomyces brucellophuscus makes it as our positive control, and then our Streptomyces, our heterologous host, does not make it, so that's a negative control up here. As Lebanon, that's our negative control, and we put in that cluster into S albus and S Lebanon, and you can see that it made plus at uh, retention time around 10.5, and this is confirmed by mass, but all you see right now is but um, there's nothing out there. It's just that. It's two cents of And then we also proceed to do genetic knockouts. I also trouble Okay, so basically, um, you have, okay, so the point here is I have a pathway, and there's a series of chemical transformations, like one to two to three to four. So then the point is, if I knock out three, then everything upstream of it, presumably, would work, right, instead of the and then everything downstream of it would be affected. So what we're doing here is we're knocking out one of the genes with a canamycin resistance, that antibiotic resistance, so then whatever has to knock out can grow on this antibiotic. So we have this, um, we have a set of genes, but then it's cloned to a plasmid, and then we have a canamycin cassette, and then that goes, and then we transform that into E. coli, which gets a uh, double crossover and gets um, replaced with canamycin, and then we con, um, okay, we, okay, um, so basically you mix, so then the E. coli cells and the streptomyces cells, they go through this process of conjugation, and it's basically like, it's like sex but between like bacteria. So then they swap plasmids. And then there's some more biological processes like some quality do that's what I'm talking about. They'll go through some um, double crossover and you can replace one of these genes with a chemomycin gene. Okay. And then you can blow those mutants up and then you can um, analyze the which PLC and Okay, so um, we did a bunch of knockouts. So I'm just showing you like some of the pathways that, uh, one uh, section of the pathway. Um, so you can see here that in our hypothesis, 4 goes to 5 um, by the protein that's encoded by A. So we knock out A and we get a buildup of compound 4, which is what we expected. And we knock out gene D, so that means the stream of it should be, there should be a buildup of 5 and that's exactly what we saw. And then we knock out C and then we saw a buildup of 6. And in all of these cases, you can see that um, when I knocked out A, B, and C, the production of physostigmine, which is around uh, around 10 here, the production is abolished. And in vitro assays, so basically, we're piece, um, uh, here's the method. So we're trying to purify out the protein. So we purify it, and then we clone it into PET30 vector through LIC, and then we can transform it into the gold, and then we would grow those up and try to um, purify it with nickel MTA. So simply put, it's basically um, this histidine tag, it's like an affinity tag. So it allows us to separate protein that we want um, away from all the other protein that we want, this chemical bond and IDTA. So then we would react it with a bunch of other substrates and then analyze it with HPLC and that's also. So we have 5 hydroxy tryptophan and then react, uh, reacting with uh, tryptophan, and we get 5 hydroxy tryptophan. And then we took 5 hydroxy tryptophan and reacted with a decarboxylase and we get serotonin, which is what we expected. All you see here are peaks, but there are numbers in them. It's We can confirm it by mass. And we also have statin for these two. And then we uh, keep going. So we have serotonin and we reacted with N acetyltransferase. So then you can see here that there's an acetyl group and this is N acetylserotonin. <coughs> and then we react N acetylserotonin with. Um, and acetyltransferase and carbonyl transferase, and we get compound number four with the 
called the Boyle Group, and it's under one mass. Um, we added in PSM8, which is a sound dependent methyl transferase, and we saw that there is an extra methylation on the compound, and that's compound 5. And then we added another methyl transferase, PSMD, and we have a methylation at the C3 of the indole ring. And then finally, we just have n single serotonin, and we shelled out the enzyme in there and let it react, and we were able to make plasma at the end. So this is called the total reconstitution of plasma in vitro. So in conclusion, we were able to confirm the role of the human gene clusters on plasticity biosynthesis with heterologous expression and in vivo genetic mutant knockouts. And we also identified a set of enzymes, a minimal set of enzymes that can convert five hydroxy sugar to plasticity. And we also determined the sequence of the dynamic transformation. So future work is identify the role of gene in gray. So basically, in our bioinformatics search, we came up with a gene cluster. But according to our in vitro assay, only seven of these were, able, were sufficient enough to convert tryptophan into physosignine. But this gene here, we don't really know the function of it, and we did a knockout of that gene. But when we knocked out that gene, there was no physosignine production. But again, according to our in vitro assay, only these seven are required. So we're trying to find out what the role of this enzyme is. And lastly, we want to try feeding modified substrates of triple batch to produce phytosigmine analog to make that. Um, we were able to um, produce this in E. coli. Uh, I don't have it up here. So what happens is maybe we can try feeding in modified substrate of triple batch. Maybe we can hal halogenate triple batch, and then maybe there's a fluorine group, a chlorine group, and then feed it into E. coli and see what kind of analog phytosigmine to it. Because there are some drugs that have halogen on them. So maybe we can improve the medicinal value of so acknowledgement, acknowledgement, yes. So these are fun links that uh, the Russell Fellowship, the BSR fund, Nathan for feedback, Joyce for feedback, and the money also allowed me to stay in the lab this summer, but we also managed to like, work on other projects. Like this is the next compound that we're trying to find out. You can see it also has a little window ring when you set it to follow right now, so that's pretty interesting. And then we're also studying what this gene cluster is another one. Yeah, questions.